I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. In this chemical transformation, the first thing that you should notice is that we have a diene and a dienophile, which means that the likely first step is going to be a diels alder reaction where the electrocyclic pathway can proceed in order to form our bicyclic fused ring system. And this is going to result in the Diels-Alder product being formed. So we will start with our cyclohexane, keeping in mind that this is also going to be a fused ring system where you have an oxygen at the top of this five-membered ring. These two carbons are the ones with the methyl groups on them from our diene originally. So here is the placement of these methyl groups. And this other five-membered ring, which acted as our dienophile, is going to be downward facing in the endo position. And this is generally the result of Diels-Alder reactions, where we end up placing these in the endo position. So this is going downwards, if you think about the three-dimensional nature of this molecule. So then the rest of this just contains this brand newly formed pi bond at this location resulting from this electrocyclic reaction. And that actually is the product of this first arrow. And then you were told that you had an acid as well. And likely the next step is going to be the protonation of this oxygen at the top of this fused ring. So we will protonate that ring, which is actually going to end up making the carbons that are attached to it susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So following protonation, the product of this transformation, we still have our cyclic fused ring system, except for now this oxygen is going to be positively charged. We still have our methyl groups at these locations, and our fused ring system with the endo product formed is located at this position. And then since we had an acid, the conjugate base will likely come in and actually serve to deprotonate one of these hydrogens, which are located at the alpha carbon position of this anhydride. And the deprotonation of those hydrogens will actually result in the formation of a new pi bond. So the deprotonation of this proton will bring these electrons down and form a new pi bond, which will actually serve to liberate this fused ring system and open this second ring since this was a positively charged oxygen in a kind of a cascade of electron flow. And once we've opened that third ring, we're left with just our two rings in this cyclic fused ring system. So this is going to result in a six-membered ring where we have two of our pi bonds now formed. So this one and the one that we had from the Diels-Alder product are still located at these positions. We have our methyl group at this top carbon. We have a methyl group here as well as a hydroxyl group at this location. And then the rest of our fused ring system, our five-membered ring is located on this hot side. And now we still have this single hydrogen located at this position. And remember, we have regenerated whichever acid we were using initially. And that acid will actually help us protonate this hydroxyl group making it a new good leaving group. So the product of that protonation leaves us with this six-membered ring, where remember we still only have two of these pi bonds. We have our methyl group here. We have our cyclic anhydride located at this position with our singly remaining hydrogen there our methyl group, and now our OH2, which as I mentioned is a great leaving group because this is going to be positively charged. And since we reform that conjugate base, what can happen now is that conjugate base can come in and deprotonate this last remaining alpha carbon hydrogen, moving these pi electrons over here and also simultaneously kicking off this great leaving group. And notice that this is reforming this aromatic ring at this location, and this is actually how we achieve our final product. And again, it all comes from that cascade effect of deprotonating this hydrogen moving these electrons over to reform our new pi bond and liberating water as a great leaving group. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, give it a thumbs up down below. And for next week's video, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this chemical transformation. Drop your thoughts as a comment down below and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.